This reminds me of the Stephanie Buttermore situation where she went all in, only this girl is doing exactly what I would have said to do, and Stephanie Buttermore did the opposite of what I said to do. Coach Greg, and what in the world is going on with the women as of late? More drama on the IB Pro Bikini World. This time it concerns Jessica Arvalo. Jessica Arivalo. Jessica Arvalo. Jessica Arvalo. Jessica Arvalo. Jessica Arivalo. Okay, so that covers all the freaking pronunciations again. I hope pick the best one. So what's going on? Okay, so Jessica Ravello is an IP pro who's always been in amazing shape, almost too amazing. Is she in fact natural? I think she's actually natural. Not often do I think that these girls are natural, but in this case I do. There are IP pros who are natural, and I think this is one of them. Okay, this is the beef I've got. So took it down. Started the whole thing. Someone asked her, "What do you think of Jessica Rivallo? Seems like a sweet girl, has good intentions, but is going about it all the wrong way." Sounds like what I said about Stephanie Butterbore. What else was said? Health needs to always be number one. If you're happy with your body when you're underweight or overweight, that's amazing. But don't promote it on social media over being a healthy body fat level. Yes, you should accept to be happy with whatever you look like, but you should be promoting a healthy body fat. Yes, I do agree with that. Just because she went about it all the wrong way and didn't do well competing and rebounded, that doesn't mean every competitor does the same. She blames bodybuilding for Cook it down. struggles instead of taking responsibility. If you want to make it 100% about mental health and not physical health, that's one thing. But she falsely ties the two together. Man, wait till we see her picture. She must have really rebounded. She must have done like Stephanie Buttermore, gained probably 40, maybe 50 pounds, right? Can't wait to see. She looks 30 to 35% body fat in her recent pics to me, which is clinically obese, but that's just a guess and I don't know for sure. Okay, well, 33% body fat or more is the clinical definition for obesity if we're going by body fat percentage. However, BMI is also often used. So we'll examine her height and weight and I'll give you her body fat percent. As you know, I have laser eye vision. I can tell you what percent she is. So 30 to 35%. Healthy body fats, 21 to 32% for women. 18 to 22, typical high performance athlete. Okay. So she's saying she's probably around 30 to 35%. Well, she's 30. She's not clinically obese. Now is she? She's actually at a healthy weight. So if you say 30 to 35, pick one. If you say she's 35 and she's obese, so be it. So what I said about Stephanie Buttermore I said she was around 33% or more. So that made her obese. That's why I used the word obese. I didn't call her fat and ugly. I said she's obese. It's just a definition. It's like saying if you're six foot seven and you're a girl, you're probably a tall girl. Now they're wrong. Oh, you said she's tall. Oh my God, you're such a mean person. You called her tall. Women don't like being called tall. It's a definition. I'm going to give you her body fat in a minute, but let's read the rest. When you have two plus million followers, you have a civil duty to society. And if you decide it's your mission to spread body positivity, I think those posts need to also address that your body fat is not a healthy level and you're putting yourself at risk for or increasing the effects of heart disease, cancer, basically every other disease known to man. And she's promoting getting obese. Yeah, then I'm going to be pretty pissed, okay? Let's see what this clinically obese woman who's putting herself at risk for cancer and all kinds of other illnesses and diseases looks like. Let's see. Are you looking at the same picture as I'm looking at? Does she look obese to you? I have laser eye vision. I know I'm very good at determining body fat. You might not be so good. Look at the picture. Does that look like clinically obese to you? You don't need me to say it's not obese. You know by looking. Or maybe it's just a picture. Maybe she's posing in a certain way. Let's see. Let's watch a video of her squatting and see. Hard to hide the fat when you're in a squat now, isn't it? Especially if you're in a freaking thong. 
So I'm watching her squat up and down, up and down in a black thong, and I'm not seeing obese. I'm seeing pretty good shape. Anyone disagree? Does this girl not look like she's in pretty freaking good shape? She's in a healthy body fat range, 21 to 32 percent. She's somewhere in the upper 20s, 25, a little bit more than that, under 30, somewhere over 20. Upper 20s, perfectly healthy, off season. She's sick and tired of being shredded all the time. She's eating a little more, and she's saying, Hey, it's okay to not be shredded year round. Her shredded photos are what's not healthy. Literally, when she's at her leanest, that's not healthy. Being an IPV pro bikini competitor is not healthy. When you're on stage, you're so lean, you're not actually healthy. The off season is when you're healthy, then you diet down to win a competition. Dieting as a professional bodybuilder to four or 5% body fat, or as a bikini competitor to under 15% body fat, not healthy. Let's look at how she used to look. Now, I must make this point because she doesn't actually get this right. She's wrong on her own assessment of body fat percentage, okay? So she is a bit skewed. I just want to point this out. She posted this, already missing this conditioning. In your opinion, what do you think is a healthy shredded as far as body fat percent? I had got down to 6.3% body fat for my last competition. As a woman, that is extremely low and only when I'm in prep for a show. Personally, I know this is not attainable or healthy for a long period of time. I'm currently around 9 to 10% and trying to maintain that as a lifestyle. Just so you know, you're dead if you're 5 to 6%. I tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Okay. I'm on this girl's side, but she's completely off the rails on her self-assessment of body fat. A female bikini competitor is not 6.3%. No, not even close. 9 to 10%. No, not even close. You're never that lean. Bikini competitors are not that lean. If you were that lean, maybe in a Miss Olympia bodybuilding, and you'd be close to death. Maybe you get that lean. Not a normal bikini competitor. So yeah, you're shredded. And by shredded, I mean 12, 13%, not six. Okay, so she posts a before, after, and after, after. 93 versus 109 versus 123. So what do y'all think? Does 93 or 109 pounds seem like or look like a healthy body fat to you? No, it's in fact underweight. It's not healthy to actually be that lean. What about in the after after photo at 123 pounds? Yeah, pretty sure that's a healthy body fat percent. It's ridiculous for anyone to say, hey, you should be dieting from there. You look better at the other photos. Hey, you should be maintaining that year round. No, the picture on the right shows a healthy body fat percentage in between the 21 to 32% range, which is recommended probably closer to 25%. 25%, I tell people, hey, that's a really good healthy zone for a female to both look good and feel good and to have a low enough body fat percent so that you're not going to get diseases and any kind of health problems, you know, cardiovascular and so on. I've gained 11 pounds, 125.1. This is the most I've ever weighed. And guess what? It's also the most I've ever accepted my body. How is that a bad message? She gained 11 pounds. She didn't go all in. She didn't gain 50 pounds. She gained 11. From being shredded, she gained 11 pounds. You know, competing in 30 some shows in three years, gained 11 pounds from her lean body fat percentage. She's not obese here. She's at a healthy weight. There's nothing wrong with somebody who's very, very lean, too lean, probably you could argue, to gain 11 pounds and now be at a healthy weight and try to promote that as being healthy. It's the same thing as if I gained 15 pounds and said, hey, everybody, I'm at 16% and I'm happy and healthy. No, you're fat now, Coach Greg. You're clinically obese because your BMI is now 33. Well, let's see, what in fact is her BMI? So I asked Jessica, I said, hey, how tall are you? She said, I'm five foot one and three quarters. So I wrote in five foot two, I rounded up. Wrote in 126 pounds. Just so you know, to be clinically obese, your BMI should be above 30. Mine is over 31. I'm clinically obese. Doesn't matter now, does it? It doesn't matter if you matter. So what is her BMI? 
23. 23. She's literally not clinically obese. For sure. Because both her body fat and BMI are not too high. And what else does she do? She posts actual freaking photos of herself and how she looks. She's not sucking in her stomach. She's not wearing a waist trainer. She's not cheating, getting special lighting and angles. She's literally showing you how she actually looks in the real world. How can you not respect this woman? She's literally showing you at her worst. She's not saying, oh, I haven't eaten for 24 hours. I'm going to suck in my stomach, twist a little bit, turn like this, closer to the camera, take a hundred photos and post the skinniest looking one. And say, look at me, I'm so ripped. Look how sexy I look. No, she literally sticks her gut out, takes a picture and says, that's me. Look at me and I accept my body. How can you not like this? How? Even Coach Greg respects this and you know how critical I am on body fat percentages. You know me, I don't BS you. I wouldn't make this shit up. If she was actually clinical obese, I'd say, hey, you're clinically obese. If she went all in and started eating 5,000 calories a day and got her weight up to 140, 150 pounds and said the same message, I'd probably say, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You're gaining a little bit of weight, you're obese. Maybe you shouldn't gain so much weight. I would actually do that. You know I would because I've done so in the past. August 5th, so she posts, which body type do you prefer? One, two, or three, and why? Swipe, 126 pounds, which is the biggest she's ever been in her life, 113 pounds when she's freaking shredded, and 160 pounds when she's a dehydrated, next to nothing, probably hardly can function human being. Okay, which do you prefer? Well, I'll give you which one I prefer. So in the first video, I see she's got a little bit of a belly, not too much. She stands to the side, very round glutes, a little bit of body fat, not too much, a little bit of saddlebags, hardly any, a tiny amount of cellulite, but not really too much, a little bit of back fat, but not hanging past the bra strap, looks to be in very good shape, somewhere in the 20% body fat. Almost her abs showing, but not quite, certainly in good shape. And in the second video, she looks really lean, body fat below 20%. She has abdominals, leg definition, you can see each muscle showing through. Very good shape, looks absolutely amazing. I think anyone would want to look like that. Very, very desired physique, hardworking athlete at the pinnacle of what she should probably be striving to attain. Okay. Maybe too low in body fat for most people to maintain year round, but hey, for her, if she can do it, good on her. Next photo. She looks like she's ready to die. She looks like she hasn't eaten enough. She's shredded. It's very impressive. Hard work to get to that point. She would have dieted, suffered, struggled, gone through everything. Probably tired all the time, have no energy levels. Looks great in a sense, but on another sense, is that what we really need to look like? If you want to look like that to win a show, by all means, go for it. Her face looks tired. She looks like she's drawn out. She looks like she just wants to eat a bit more. Nothing wrong with trying to look like that if that's what you want to look like. I just say, in my personal preference of you, I like the middle. You might like the third, you might like the first. I like the middle. Let's see, what one does she like? That's what matters most now, isn't it? I'm going to be brutally honest with y'all because I don't know how to be any other way. I'm not happy in any of these videos. I know how I felt in every single one of these videos like it was yesterday. The first video I weighed, I was 126 pounds and I feel like I'm on the journey to self-love, but I also feel very overweight and embarrassed. When you've been underweight or ripped your whole freaking life or lean for so long, your brain is getting warped. You see this image reflecting at you and you think that's how you should look. Then you gain weight too quickly. You see that image and you're like, whoa, what is that? Is that really how I look? It's shocking. That's why you need to gain weight slowly. You gain weight too fast, it can cause mental disorders. It really can, trust me, it can. You say, oh, I know, show's over. I dieted for four months. 
I'm going all in now. I'm going to gain 50 pounds. I eat 5,000 calories a day, every single day. Ice cream, chips, I can't wait. Eat whatever I want. I can't wait. Then I'll just go all in. I'll gain all this weight. Then my body will get sick of eating all that. And it'll just naturally come down to a shredded level again. Everyone will be happy. And the world will be a better place. In imagination land, that's what happens. In the real world, mental disorders come from this. You see yourself, you binge, you're eating 5,000 calories. All of a sudden you're bulimic because you're like, hey, I shouldn't have ate all that food. What can I do? That's what you can do now, isn't it? Or you develop an obsessed personality to do an excessive amount of cardio, 100 kilometer bike rides, 200 kilometer bike ride, 300 kilometers, 10 hours of cardio. I'll burn 10,000 calories off today so that I can eat whatever I want. I ate 50,000 donuts. I'll just walk 50,000 steps to burn off those donuts. That's what happens in the real freaking world. Let's see what else she says. The second video where I felt she looked the best, where she looked amazing. I bet you most of you thought she looked amazing too. I'm ashamed that I didn't keep my prep shredded body that I worked so hard for and let it all go so don't even care to eat healthy or be on a routine because that's the point if I'm not my best. So I feel she looks freaking amazing. Like, wow, if you could look like that, your life would be perfect now, wouldn't it? And she's embarrassed by it. Hated it. It's like, oh, I let myself go. Dang it. You see the problem? You see what competing can do to you if you don't have the right attitude and a mental ability to say, hey, and justify, what should I weigh? How should I accomplish this goal? You see how important a coach can be? Way more important than just what macros and calories do I need? And how many minutes of cardio do I need to do to win the show? So much more to it than that. The third video at 106 pounds. It's me on prep with no life. Capital no life. I put myself in a dungeon like lifestyle. I don't drink alcohol. Go out. Eat a calorie over my macros. Endless cardio. Obsess over my lines. And the list goes on and on and on. That is what dieting is like for most people. That is what it's like to maintain a completely shredded physique. For me, that's 5%. I would love to look like that, but I feel exactly like this woman's expressing herself. I can relate because I've been at every spectrum. I've been the most shredded person. I've been in the middle, which is where I feel I am now. And I've been on the heavier side. I've never been morbidly obese, so I can't relate to being a hundred pounds overweight. I can only relate to being crazy ripped, still pretty freaking ripped and normal. That is where I've been. I can't relate to being hundred pounds overweight, but I know that when I was normal, it was still hard mentally to see myself looking normal because I'd been so shredded before and I wanted to look like that again. So I've been eating a certain way, low calorie dense foods. I do cardio bike ride. I do all this good stuff to be healthy. I'm at a healthy weight that I can maintain. If I try to push too hard and say, Hey, 9%, that's pretty good, but I want eight now or seven. Problems start. They have, I go hypo, I don't feel good, I don't have energy, I can't eat as much as I want. Not worth it, people. Here to tell you, it's not worth it. What she realized is, wow, I really did look good at 113 pounds. It made me appreciate my journey even more and made me be honest with myself and even more and realize that when I look in the mirror, I have a warped body image. You look in the mirror, you don't see what the rest of the world sees. You don't feel good enough. Your fat's hanging. You're bad over here. Oh, there. It doesn't look right. Oh, my boobs are too big. They're too small. My ass is hanging too low. Too much cellulite. Oh, my loose skin. Oh, my hairlines we see. Everyone looks in the mirror and is upset with something. Stop it. Just be freaking healthy, healthier than last time. But don't strive for some magical idea of what perfection is that no one even knows that you can't ever achieve. And even if you achieve it, you'll invent something to say, no, it's not actually perfect. Nope. No, it's not. You can't win. Greg Doucette.com for coaching. Greg Doucette, IP pro. Hope you freaking learned something. Bloop it up two videos. Be sure to watch them both. And until next time, I am out. Imagine thinking that she's obese, come on.